Thank you. Uh, so Tanya sent her apologies. Uh, she was double booked, uh, so she couldn't come. Uh, so my name is Tanya Silva. Uh, most of the time online, I use R G A I A C S as my username. So if you're looking to find me online, that's my username. Uh, and Tanya, that's her contact. If you want to find her online, uh, she's pretty active on Twitter. So uh, how this chip uh, proposal uh, kind of start was last year on this same city in Edinburgh. So there was a project from Arizona 2020 that's a big uh, grant project from the European Union. Uh, and one project under the, that umbrella is the Open Dream Kit. So the idea for this project is to work on infrastructure for researchers. And one of the goals is to strengthen uh, virtually research and environment. So for example, Jupiter's uh, notebooks and all the Jupyter ecosystems. Uh, and last year, as I was saying, we had a meeting that was the computational mathematics with Jupyter and at the International Center for Mathematical Science. So uh, the Institute, uh, Software Sustainability Institute, where I work, we have some fellows, and one of the fellows is Alexander Konal Valov, and he's one of the co-eyes, uh, co-investigators for the Open Dream Kit project. So he kindly invited me to join uh, the team uh, for this one week, uh, half talks, half uh, hack day, which was quite, ni quite nice. Uh, so during all the conversation that people was having, we started talking about uh, how to develop the lessons, because most of people, they was interested in that. So uh, at some point, it was like, we want to have lessons in a website that looks nice. Not exactly as nice as this one, because this is an old one. But I got involved in Software Carpentry. That's a nonprofit organization that teaches people in academia how to code in Python uh, and version control that, so, uh, that software. And this is a screenshot for how the lessons was looking like in 2014. Uh, what you can see on the screen is that they have a title for this lesson, so it's making choices, and they have at a little below a series of objectives for that lesson. So, for example, uh, readers suppose you know how to create a single image made out of color blocks at the end of that lesson. So it's a little not too long lesson. But you can see some codes at the first uh, section. So image grids, you can see some Python codes in some cells. So uh, the idea that was discussing on the workshop is like, it would be really nice to end up with some lessons that has uh, this kind of look, look uh, a little more professional, and with some colors that make readers find things easily. But that you could write the lesson in Jupyter's notebook because if there's some code and some output, you don't want to copy and paste every time that you change, especially if you have 100 uh, cells on your lesson. So we was looking on uh, Jupyter. So this is the same uh, lesson uh, that doesn't have the title, but you can see that the objectives are the same and the same Python codes. So this is Jupyter uh, at that time, 2014. Uh, we didn't use the word Jupyter, was uh, I Python notebooks at that time. So uh, it's the same notebook that was generated in that previous image, but just on Jupyter. And it was like, so this is how you have on Jupyter, and this is how you're writing, which most people on academia that use that tool is already familiar with. But this, when you're trying to export this, you can choose someone that's going to read the lesson. You can say, oh, I can use NBView. That's a nice tool. I just need to send a link. And this is how you're going to see on NBView, which is OK. But as you see, you still have like the numbers of the cells here, which, as you see, start on 6 on this example. And why the reader can think, why start on six and not one if it's the start of the lesson? Uh, and there is no uh, color, so it can be a little hard for people to follow in the lesson because it doesn't make uh, very 
uh, highlighting things. And he was keeping these discussions like, okay, so what you can do? And if you ever use Jupyter Notebook, you might have come across with the option to download your notebook in different formats. So you can download as the notebook itself, but you can also download as a Python script. That was something that I mentioned yesterday on the beginner's day for someone. The, uh, that person was asking, like, if I want to get just a script from the notebook, so you can just go and download. You can download as a HTML file or a Markdown or a restructured text or LaTeX or get a PDF via LaTeX. So there's a couple of options. And it was like, okay, so let's see how end up if you decide to download as HTML because you can upload the HTML to many websites and they just render. And looks exactly as NB view because that's basically what NB view was doing. And it's like, okay, we still have this kind of same problem. You still want to remove some things and add some things. So uh, keep on that uh, discussion, another thing that people kind of raise was like, sometimes you have one lesson, but you want to split the lesson in sub-lessons. So maybe you want to split in like day one and day two because it's a two days workshop or morning or afternoon, and you might have extra contents, not just Jupyter notebooks. You might have uh, Python script because you explain for people how they're going to use scripts, or you might have some file formats that you want to download because uh, you have some chemistry uh, uh, files that people need to read and so on, and you want to make it easy for people to download all this files, so you want to organize all the lesson in some format. So this is screenshot was something that Tanya was end up working during that week, one, one year and a half ago, here in Edinburgh. And it's kind of a good, nice prototype. It's, you, you can actually use, but still was discussing how you can uh, use better Jupyter notebooks. And the main thing that was like, why do you want to use Jupyter Notebooks? It's because the environment is familiar to authors, and it's part, at this moment, more uh, 40 program languages. So it's not just Python. If someone is writing a lesson in R, they can use the same infrastructure. If someone is writing a lesson in C, the same thing, they just can build on top of uh, everyone, what everyone else already contributed. And uh, what pieces of the pipeline uh, we kind of was building on top? So there is NB Convert. Uh, can you raise your hand if you know all right what uh, NB Convert X is? So that's half of the room. So NB Convert is what's behind all that options that I was showing before on uh, Jupyter Notebook that you can download the notebook in different formats. And the other things any start site generator like Sphinx, Hugo, or Jekyll. So that was the two pieces of work that you need to build on top. And uh, Tanya was, uh, again, working on other ideas, um, mixing Jupyter Notebooks and Jekyll, so that's one of the Git repositories. And fast forwarding a little bit, uh, this is uh, the Travis, uh, Tardis, sorry, uh, is uh, the time machine from Doctor Who. So you are in England. So I want to put this image. Uh, I will. I end up in uh, Eo Python last year. So that's the photo uh, of uh, some discussions. What not on the discussion, but some of the people was uh, close by. So uh, was Thomas. Thomas is in the back. Uh, he and I was in one of the helping desk. And someone uh, show up saying, so uh, can you help me with something on Jupyter Notebooks? And it's like, yes, so, so what do you need? And that attendee was like, so I have to create some reports, but every time I need to put some logo on my reports, because my boss needs those reports to be archiving something. And all the analysis for the reports are on Jupyter Notebooks, but I, at the end, I just want to like, include the logo, and I want to save time, because I don't want to keep doing that every time. Uh, that end was like, because at the moment, I 
generate the latex code, and then I need to edit the latex code. So I don't want you keeping editing the files every time, because as you might know, uh, as a software developer, if you need to keep doing things every time again, it's error prone, so that's why you want to automate. And at that time on the table, I was like, yeah, you could like create a, a LaTeX class and try to avoid to do most of the editing. And Thomas was like, oh no, but you can have custom uh, templates for NB convert. And I was like, oh yeah, that's true. So uh, for so that was like, it's funny because I never, uh, I was using that option a long time ago, but I kind of forgot what was. So this is a demo time just to give you an idea of how and we convert and the custom templates work. So, we, so we're going to do this on the shell. Uh, I think it's a little. It's okay for people on the audience to read. So uh, there's a few files here. Uh, the 04 uh, minus con dot ipy nb is just a Jupyter notebook. So if I do uh, less on that file, uh, uh, it's just a uh, JSON format. If you ever open that file without, uh, it's just a plain text. So there's nothing uh, extra special on that one. And there is a template here, this full template that I basically just download from the source code from uh, the note uh, NB convert. So it's exactly the same file. And they use uh, Jinja too. So if you ever uh, edit any of the Jinja files to template, so you're going to be familiar with this uh, instructions, extend. So it's just saying that's extending one previous template and there's blockers and so on. And not going too deep on this one, but it can create, uh, can use that template to generate the HTML file from the IPython notebook. So I can type the nb convert, and I can pass the file. Uh, I can use template, and I can pass a file. So uh, foo tpl, and I can pass the file name. And it's going to generate, saying that it convert. So I'm just going to switch the screen to open uh, on the browser. So it's this one. Yeah, so that's the output. Uh, just refresh so you can see. And it's pretty similar of one of the screens that I showed you before on the Jupyter Notebook. But if I want to say, oh, I want to add some extra information, I can build on top of that template. So I have a custom A here, and I'm just going to show you a diff. So you can see what I make the change. So uh, foo 10p and cos a tnp. So I just add this line. So it's just saying Euro Python 2018. So it's just before all the notebook information. And I can use Jupyter again and be convert. A template, and now I'm going to change the template to custom a.tpl, and I want output as 04 con custom a and the notebook itself. So it's um, Sorry, there's a typo here. And it's using now the template, my custom template, and converting the notebook. So it was writing, and I'm going to open on the browser. So this is the new one, just refreshing, so be sure that's going there. So there is a EuroPython 2018 here on the top. So in as a any minimal example, I can do something, I can customize that my template. Uh, and then I want to do something more uh, interesting, just like not just a text, I can maybe add an image. 
So that's the second one. So uh, the difference between the, the foo and the custom B. So I just add an image here. So you can see here. So just a HTML tag with the image. And you can convert using the same command, just changing the template here. Uh, this one. And I'm going to switch to the other one. So then I have the logo of the EuroPython 2018 here. So the idea is like, if I can do this with like just changing one line of code, I might be able to add any other kind of information that my employee might want to have on the reports, the logo, the address, any email or anything. So that's what uh, Thomas had suggested to her to use uh, this feature from NB Convert. And it was like, this looks very good, but uh, it's kind of uh, the users are just accessing the Jupyter Notebook and see some at the top of the iceberg. And it, that's just 10%. The 19% of everything is under the water and no one's kind of seen. That was the case of that attending. And the same attending that was like yesterday on the on beginner's day. So it's like, maybe you can see if you can improve that and they make that my, more visible in terms of templates and so on. And that's what I end up talking with Thomas on last year. And it's like, what I can do? And he was like, maybe you can send a proposal and I was like, okay, I know that like Python has proposals. They have the PEPs, and I was already kind of familiar. Uh, I read a few of them, especially PEP 8, that's about uh, coding formats. I was like, okay, uh, Thomas told me that there is a chip to enlastment proposal, so I started looking online, and it's like, okay, there's a kit repository that's from the Jupyter organization, and it's called enlastment proposals, and it's like, Reading the readme and it's like, yeah, that's the procedure. If you want to suggest something, you can copy one of the files, create one directory, open a pull request. So that's what I decide to do. I decide to open a pull request saying like, can you add templates as metadata? And this is an last minute proposal for, for this pull request. And you can see that Thomas had a comment just left to me. So uh, my idea was uh, because I, want to reuse the same template over and over again every time that they're going to export this. It's supposed to be saved somewhere, so that's why it needs to be something uh, on the notebook format, not just the note, uh, Jupyter interface. So that's why I end up sending the, the proposal. And there was a few uh, comments below, and I include like an image, a screenshot. Of, like, this is how I envision the idea. You can go to the Jupyter uh, interface and you can say, this is, I want to set a template, that's my template, custom template that I want to use. And later, you can just go and download that. Uh, at the end, uh, we had some discussions on the issue, but I ended up being too busy to just push and get like a kind of prototype and uh, explore more the ideas. And if you propose something and you're really not able to take forward with lots of time, it's kind of, Keep open. Uh, people was very welcome from everyone from the Jupyter community, sending feedbacks and so on. So it's kind of my fault to not have too much time. But that was uh, what I want to share with you today. Uh, I want to thank Special Thomas for all their contributions and for me to uh, share this. And uh, if you have questions, I open to having questions now. If you want to make questions later on Twitter or anything, that's uh, my AD and Tanya's ID. Uh, thank you very much to listen. Uh, thanks, are there any questions? No, not at all. What kind of, uh, you said you ran out of time to sort of fully implement it. How, how big of a kind of job do you think it is to uh, implement one of these? proposals, this proposal? Uh, the main challenge was just like learn how the insides of like how NB convert works yeah. and the order that it reads files, 
because mm. uh, the challenge is like, if I store the, any, not uh, the name of the template that I want to use, it's inside the notebook, but the NB convert, he started doing some things before open the notebook. So I kind of was like, I'm changing this part. It's like not super trivial. You kind of need to open the notebook and at that moment you kind of pass that and later you can say, okay, I have that piece of information and now I need to go back and change the default one. Okay. So uh, that was the most like time consuming that I didn't have time to devote too much. Is it all written in Python, the, the NB convert? Yeah, the NB convert is yeah. in Python, it's fully Python. Uh, the templates, they have a series of templates, uh, and those templates are in Jinja too. Okay, yeah. That's your Python. And is the Jupyter Notebook, is that fully Python, or is, are there other bits of... No, Jupyter Notebook, uh, there's lots of JavaScript, ah, okay. the user yeah. interface, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Anyone, any questions before we wrap up? Okay, well, can we thank, thank you. Renier again? Thank you for listening. Enjoy.